And um, I just don't know how you can imagine that these claims are going to be paid when, again, you've got a balance sheet that shows uh, $379.5 million in unpaid medical claims. Yeah. Shortfall over its assets of $222 million. And even again, if all those assets were just devoted to these unpaid medical claims. Yeah. I don't, and I don't know that they are. Um, I would like to. You don't uh, know that they are. I don't know that they are going to be paid. I would like, though, to um, talk a little bit about New York in this context. But, but I also have to say the numbers you quoted me about assets and liabilities, with due respect, I need time to review this report. Um, it was given to our, some of our staff got to review it in camera yesterday, and I'm not willing to accept that those are the accurate numbers until I've had a chance to review them. Well, Mr. Slavik, with all due respect, you're a smart guy. Why should we be having to give you numbers that are publicly available? Get the numbers yourself. I have, we have you, our you, sh you should have already had these, these, these numbers. You're saying that you don't trust our numbers. Uh, again, we showed you this report. We gave you the chance to respond to it. That's, that's unusual, as you know. Uh, we made all the, the changes that you suggested, but you're saying you can't trust our numbers. You should know these numbers. This is, this is your job, and not, not to know what the assets and liabilities are of these companies. Let me, let me give you some more numbers because they're accurate. A report points out that in three states with no guarantee fund coverage, in other words, no, no guarantee fund here, failed co-ops are reporting $500 million in unpaid claims and not nearly enough assets to cover them. And we're talking about New York, as I said, but also Kentucky, Louisiana. Now, imagine that. You sign up for health insurance in the Obamacare marketplace. Uh, you pay your premiums on time. You do everything right. You play by the rules. And then your insurance company goes bust. And then what happens? A hospital can sue you for your unpaid bill, even though you've, you've done everything right. I mean, I, I just think it's amazing that you guys aren't more concerned about this. Um, I, I, can you give all those patients assurance that's not going to happen? They're not going to get a bill and have to pay twice? We certainly are concerned about all these wind downs, and these wind downs are complicated processes, both from the standpoint of the patient, who I think are the first priority, the physicians. Uh, and hospitals who, who you're t you discuss in the context of New York, and also the federal government interest. Uh, so, you know, there are, there are precedents through the course of history of health insurance companies winding down. Uh, there are processes that states run. States have jurisdiction over that process. We try to represent our own interest in that process of the, the federal government. But I will say um, we have, we have um, and you may criticize us for this, uh, but we have released funds uh, in fact, we released $30 million of funds last year under my authority to co-ops that were closing down so that they could pay claims for consumers. And you could argue that that uh, was $30 million that could have been in the federal treasury, but well, it's, we believed it's, it was an obligation look, that we paid. $30 million of taxpayer money. It's, it's the same people. Um, these are taxpayers who have found themselves losing their health insurance uh, and now potentially facing claims from providers because their health insurance company that was a you know, federally established, federally subsidized health care company went, went bust. What I can there's, tell you there's is a real human cost. Let me, let me tell you what the, what, what the New York co-op uh, situation is. Uh, 